Okay guys, this is being done uncut, unscripted, and on the fly. Alright, so yesterday, Angry Joe, Other Joe, and Alex from the Angry Joe Show, and basically AG News, as they call it, uh, basically did a breaking news segment where they talked about how Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, the live action one that came out this past weekend, topped the box office and became the most successful video game adaption into a movie ever and basically becoming the number one movie in the world if not america and the number one family friendly film or family film uh, in america if not the world but the one thing they did ask in that video uh, towards the end at least was what are we going to get basically what do we expect in the sequel because we are going to get a sequel I mean, the, basically the mid credit scenes from what everybody's talking about and even showing has Tails coming out of an exact same portal that Sonic came through uh, at the beginning of the film and having a locator on him, basically being able to locate Sonic. So the question is, besides Tails, what else are we going to expect in future Sonic movies? Mostly potential sequels should the sequel itself become a success? And that's what I want to try to answer right here. Now, I know I've probably answered it before, talked about it before, you know, what potentially we could get in the future as far as sequels. And I stick by that. I mean, obviously with the second movie, because one of the things uh, trending on Twitter is Sonic Movie 2, or hashtag Sonic Movie 2. And... Besides Tails and obviously Robotnik slash Eggman, what else or who else could we expect in the second movie? Well, one obvious choice would be Knuckles. Could we get Knuckles in this movie? I mean, obviously what we got in the movie itself, the first one, is the appearance of Echidnas. So we know Echidnas exist in this version of Sonic. So does that mean Knuckles is on the verge of showing up? Possibly. Could he show up in the second movie? That is a possibility as well. Um, we don't know how he'll show up. Will he do what Tails did and that show up in the mid credits? You know, in a scene during the mid credits, if you will, I should say. Will he do that and set up, you know, the foundation for a potential third movie? Will he show up as one of the antagonist or at least anti-heroes of this movie of the second movie that's a good question but obviously it is setting up the idea that when sonic and knuckles do meet if it's in the second movie or the potential third movie that they're not going to be on you know friendly terms they're not going to be happy to see each other the base i mean basically what this movie has done when it comes to that at least at the beginning has established Sonic's probably disdain or distrust for the Echidnas. So, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens in the second movie, should Knuckles appear. But I think, obviously, besides Tails, besides the Eggman slash Robotnik, I think Knuckles does need to appear because you've already set up the fact that you have Echidnas in this world of Sonic. So... Obviously, Echidna's following maybe Tails after he's come through the portal, you know, and thus following him, unbeknownst to him, I should say, mostly that being Knuckles, would make a lot of sense. But, is he going to be the only one? Is he the only character? One thing that, um, you know, Angry Joe, Joe Vargas, that is, and other Joe and Alex have stated, and even Saber Spark, Saber Spark even talked about this in his review, that the one thing they don't want to see happen is the sequel get cluttered with too many characters. Like, you need to take your time with this, spread it out as best you can, and see what happens. Now, that's potentially a possibility, a strong possibility. But knowing that knowing how sometimes movie companies or any kind of company or business works sometimes if they want to do a sequel or a continuation or a follow-up 
they usually like to try to put a lot more in than the last time because they're not sure whether or not, especially nowadays, they're not sure whether or not that sequel or the follow-up, if you will, is going to be as successful as the original or as the first one. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, if we don't just get, besides Tails, that we get, and besides Robotnik slash Eggman, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't just get Knuckles, but the fact that Eggman on the Mushroom World has that same quill from Sonic still, and is still energized, it makes you wonder if maybe that sets up the potential appearance of Metal Sonic. Think about that. Think about that. Eggman is going insane. He's trying to plot his revenge. What better way to try to get back at Sonic than just not manipu than not just manipulating maybe Knuckles, who's already going to have issues with Sonic when he appears, if he does in the second film. But what better way than to create a machine that's powered by the same power that Sonic has, thanks to his quill, and is basically a metal version of him. So Metal Sonic slash Mecha Sonic, I think, would fit the second film as being a primary big-time obstacle by Eggman for Sonic. I could see that. So even though, even though we don't want, even though I agree that we shouldn't clutter the sequel with so many characters, knowing that potentially this could be the only other Sonic movie we get, and Paramount probably thinking the same way, and the creative team behind it thinking the same way, I could see them doing that. I could see them saying, okay, we're not just going to have Tails, we're not just going to have Knuckles, but we're also going to have Metal Sonic. So it would, be, so I would not put it past them to put Metal Sonic, I would not put it past them to put Tails um, uh, in the film. Well, not just Tails, but I, wouldn't, I mean Knuckles. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them to put Knuckles and Metal Sonic in the film along with Sonic, Eggman, and Tails, and, you know, Sonic's human friends that he's already made. Uh, made friends with, who he's become close with. So I would not be surprised if they pull something like that. I would not. I would not be surprised whatsoever. But let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, as I check my time here, I got in about nine minutes. But let's, uh, before I clock in, uh, but let's say for the sake of argument, let's say they do that, and the second movie, even with those additional characters, becomes a success. What happens, or what, who do we see in a third potential film? Now, the third potential film, I think, should be the more interesting one. Now, Joe and, now both Angry Joe and other Joe and Alex did agree that if you get in a third film, which basically, from what we're hearing, they want to make this a movie franchise. They want to make this portion of Sonic into a successful movie franchise, a series of movies, if you will. So, if that's the case, what do we get in the third film? Let's say the second film succeeds, becomes a hit, maybe not as big, you know, as the first one, but big enough, successful enough to spawn a third movie. Who do we get in the third film? Well, okay, the second film, you've already established uh, Knuckles' appearance, you've already established Tails coming in, well, you established that at the end of the mid at the end of the first film, in the mid-credits, you've already established, like I said, Knuckles appearing, along with Tails, and possibly Metal Sonic. Who else do you bring in? Who else is there left? And Angry Joe and his friends acknowledge that the next best thing would be Shadow, and possibly Rouge, and Amy Rose. And that's true. Maybe bringing in Shadow, Rouge, and Amy Rose could be the next potential thing. But... I say let's not do that yet. I say let's not do that yet because you don't want to rush into things. You don't want to rush into things. You want to take your time. You see, the one thing that DC, uh, Warner Brothers and DC gets criticized about is they rushed too quickly into the Justice League uh, movie. That they should have took their time, they should have done what Marvel did and that set up each of the characters that are going to be involved you know, in the Avengers. And that's what they did. They established Iron Man. They established uh, the Hulk. They established Black Widow. They established Captain America. 
they established uh, Thor, and they all did this with their own individual films. You know, they did this. With, like I said, they all did this with their own individual films, as well as they established, I think, Hawkeye. So, like I said, they did this with their own individual films, and then when you, so that when you got to Avengers, the movie was just as good, if not better, than they expected. And then later on, you set up other universes that connected to it, and there you go. And that's the one thing a lot of people look at Warner Brothers as being the mistake they made. They didn't follow that same pattern to establish the characters that were going to be involved first before you put them in the movie. Now, the reason I bring that up with Sonic... Like I said, the reason I bring that up with Sonic is because... You know, Shadow is a very popular character, and fans wanting to see him in the th in, on the big screen in, a, in this movie franchise, you don't want to rush it. You want to take your time with it. So I think the third movie is, one, yes, you do bring in Amy Rose if you don't bring her in the second movie. If you bring her in the second movie, I'm not against Amy Rose appearing in the second movie, maybe in a mid-credits, post-credits scene, but... You know, if you bring her in in the movie entirely, yeah, that's probably going to hurt it a bit, even if it is a success. But I think, obviously, you save Amy Rose for, one, the post-credit, mid-credit scenes of the second movie. And then you use the third movie not only to bring her in, but you do what a lot of fans want. You go outside the box. And what I mean by go outside the box, you establish that there is more than just these game characters that Sonic is friends with. And I think when you introduce Longclaw the Owl, you basically establish that there are non-game characters that Sonic is friends with or associated with. And I think by the third film, at least you reference it in the second film. You should reference it in the second film. Kind of give it a reference, an acknowledgement, a name drop, whatever. But I think in the third film, you go outside the box, and with the exception of Amy Rose... If you do that for the third film, you know, courtesy of the post credit scene to the second, then with the third film, instead of Shadow and Rouge, you wait maybe to the fourth film to do that. I think with the second film, go outside the box and bring in the Freedom Fighters. Bring in the not whole Freedom Fighters. That's what you do. You establish the fact that they've been friends with Sonic for a long time and that they were there to help you know, mend and, you know, you know, bring Longclaw back to health. And that it was Longclaw at the behest of, and that it was Sally. It was Sally at the behest of Longclaw that sent Tails to go look for Sonic. So you do that. You do that. At least name drop the fact that if Sonic asked Tails, how'd you get here? And he shows him the locator, but then he asks, well, who sent you? If he asks who sent you, you name drop, not just Longclaw, kind of acknowledge that, yeah, she's alive still, because obviously the owl is a female. But then you also say that it was in, that also, but then you have him drop maybe Sally's name. And that would, that would, honestly, honest, be honest with you, that would drive the crowd and the audience insane. If you name drop, if you drop the fact that not only is Longclaw alive, but she sent Tails at the behest of Sally. That Sally's the one that had Longclaw get Tails to go and find Sonic. If you name drop Sally's name, guarantee you it's going to, it, the reaction it's going to get is going to get massive in that theater. And not just in the theater, but it's going to be massive across the internet. Across social media and across the internet, it is going to go. Hold on for a sec. It is going to become a. It's going to be a number one trend on Twitter, Facebook, you name it. It's going to blow up should that happen. And I'm not saying that because I'm a fan of Sally's. I'm saying that because of the fact that there are so many fans of this character. She's become such a beloved character that if you name drop her in the second film and set up the fact that she and the other Freedom Fighters could show up in a third film because you're thinking outside the box and you're waiting to hold off on Shadow and Rouge until maybe a fourth film, 
that right there will make the second film a success no matter what. Just by that name dropping of not just Long Claw being alive, but it was Long Claw that sent Tails after Sonic at the behest of Sally. That to me would definitely set up a lot of stuff that people would be happy about. They would be extremely proud out of. And basically feel like, yes, they are basically, the creative team is basically continuing the trend that we started back with the first film. And that is they're listening. They and Paramount are listening to the fans and giving the fans what they want. So I think potentially for a third for a third film, if that happens, you think outside the box. You think outside the box. You bring in those freedom fighters. Establish the fact that this Sonic movie universe is a hybrid of all Sonic movie uh, universes, or all Sonic universes, if you will. And then for a fourth film, you can bring in Shadow and Rouge because it would make sense that you build up to that. You're slowly taking your time. Yes, the third film would be cluttered with a lot of characters, but it, but as you get to that third film and then the fourth film, you're basically establishing you've already established the universe and certain characters associated with it. So I think by the third film, go outside the box, bring in the Freedom Fighters, you know, name drop maybe Sally's ex their existence in the second film by at least acknowledging Sally being the one that had Longclaw, by you know Longclaw who's still alive, obviously. Send Tails to find Sonic. You set that up for the third film. You bring in the Freedom Fighters in the third film. And then by the fourth film, that's when you bring in Shadow and Rouge. Because you've already had everything uh, set up uh, by that time. So, anyway though, that's what I think potentially I could see for the Sonic movie franchise. For the future of the Sonic movie franchise. Them going in those directions and bringing in characters in that manner. But what do you guys think? Who would you hope to see shows up, not just in the second film, but in potential future films? Who do you expect to see show up? Well, and who do you a, potentially, and who or what do you want to see get reference dropped by name? You know, character or whatever. Let me know down below. I gotta get into work now, guys. But let me know uh, down below what, what do you guys want to see. And also to let you know, I did do a follow-up video on my live stream response to Lance's video of how one man's ego is killing Sonic the Hitchhog, which was also mirror posted two days later by Dylan Thomas called Has Ian Flynn Ruined the Sonic Comics? That's coming out later today, along with some new vids it's as well. But let me know what you guys think, though, about what I had to say about potentially future Sonic movies in the future and who could show up and also let me know if you agree with any of that and who would you like to see show up and who do you, would you like to see name dropped or whatever name dropped reference wise in future movies let me know down below i gotta get into work now and i'm out